Okay, here we are inside, and I'm going to go ahead and lug it over here and plug it in. As you can see, I've got all the wires unplugged from my other computers that I've had set up here. I had the uh, Dell Dimension XPS 500 set up uh, with this mouse, speakers, and monitor, and keyboard. But um, I'm going to use it all for this thing and just do that real quick. So here it is. The Beast! Gosh, look, at that, isn't it? look at that. Can you believe how big that thing is? It's insane! Wow. Holy cow. That is the biggest desktop I have ever owned. I swear to God. I have never owned anything this big. That is insane. Insanely big. And insanely cool. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and plug in the back and stuff here. Uh, well, I guess we know why there isn't a sound chip on the inside, or I couldn't find one by visually inspecting it. There is actually no audio or mic ports on this. So, I'm guessing it was supposed to have a sound card, but that is not included in this deal. So, I'm going to have to put something in it. Let's see if it starts up first, though, before we do anything funky. And as you see, it actually started up just fine. I believe it is counting up the RAM at the moment. could be wrong okay I'm back and um, it turns out I might have just been impatient I swapped out a PC 100 RAM stick I found in a box of parts I had laying around and it seems to be booting up but it gets stuck at the CMOS battery uh, being dead so I went ahead and went to Walgreens and got another one it is this kind if you need it. It is the 2032. Uh, I used an Energizer, but the CR2032 is the type you need for this computer. Um, so, let's go ahead and try that again. Okay, so this time, instead of giving me a CMOS battery error, I got incorrect time, which is great. Because this means that the CMOS is working perfectly. System, oh, date and time right here. Time. How can it be 7519? That doesn't even make sense. And it's 2021, wow, hey. <laughs> this thing's more futuristic than I had first thought. Jeez, it is seven, 75, wow. How is that possible? Okay, let's change that. <clears throat> uh, 12 plus seven, eight, nine, <laughs> don't laugh. Six, okay. Now it's all set up. Now we save settings. And we exit the setup. And now it should recycle into boot again. And this time, hopefully, we'll get Windows.
<laughs> oh, look at that. It's running Debian. Oh my god, that's amazing. This... <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome! <laughs> oh my god! A Pentium. I have an IBM Pentium 2 running Debian! <laughs> oh, that's freaking awesome! Hmm, look at that. It is actually Debian GNU Linux 3.1. And it's all command prompt. There is no GUI at all. Wow. So, uh, that is pretty freaking cool. I'm actually going to shut off this, um, <clears throat> uh, computer and wipe the whole disk here and install Windows 98 SE on it. So, when you see me next time, I will be booting into Windows 98 SE and we'll begin to look at that. Welcome back! Windows 98 SE is finally done installing and I've got it all set up the way it needs to be with the correct drivers and even USB support now so I can use flashcards and storage devices on here which is very nice. Um, but first before we get into playing games on this system and really showing it off uh, because Windows by itself is pretty boring and if I just clicked around in Windows you would be uh, bored to tears. So, what I'm going to talk about right now, though, is some of the hardware troubles I've had with this thing. As you know, it's kind of weird in that it doesn't have integrated audio, but that's nothing too weird since my Packard Bell Platinum 55 doesn't have integrated audio, but it did have an ISA sound card, which this didn't. I assume it's supposed to have a Crystal Audio ISA sound card, but it doesn't have one, so... What I have done is I've put a PCI Yamaha A301-G50 sound card in here. That uses the XG sound chip, but unfortunately it is not DOS compatible with the current drivers that are available on the internet. That is a big deal, and I have decided to order a Sound Blaster Vibra 16 card with OPL chip, and that should be coming soon. I should also mention I don't have a proper CD pass-through cable for this sound card that is currently installed, which uh, means that on games like Pod and other stuff, I do not have CD sound while the game is running. Um, it will have all the regular sound effects and stuff, but I will not have the music, so that's a problem. The other problem I noticed when I was using this computer and setting up Windows for the first time is that the mouse was not working. It was not correctly detecting the mouse I was using on the Packard Bell and the Dell T500 XPS. This little compact mouse I've been using on all my systems and uh, it's a normal PS2 mouse. There's nothing fancy about it. It's basically just a late 90s IntelliMouse rebranded to Compaq, and it, it works great. But uh, not on this computer. It refuses to see it. So what I am using is an old 1994 Compaq mouse. And uh, I really like this mouse, just because it's weird looking. Also very utilitarian and small. Um, but it detects this fine and uses it, so I'm going to be using this one. And there's nothing particularly special about it. But yeah. So, I have no idea why it makes a difference, but it does apparently. The game I'm going to be looking at to show off this computer's graphics chip, the S3 Verge chip, is um, Pod. It's a racing game from 1997, I think? But anyway, it's a very good game. I played it a lot as a kid, and uh, it would be only topped by Moto Racer, in my opinion. It's uh, sci-fi, basically you run around on the desolated planet and try and escape, but as you'll see in a minute, this card makes a little bit better use of the shading and textures than on some of my other computers. I'll be uploading videos of the Packard Bell later, so stay tuned for those. Now, because it's just an S3 chip on here and it's not actually some fancy graphics card, we can't actually access the graphic options. So, 
Go back out. Single race. And this will just show what the game will look like or looks like. Um, let's go ahead and pick Alderaan. Because I like this map. And then my favorite car, the Gamma. Now, if you notice, the shading on the shadows is nice, but the actual texture mapping and things like that is less than amazing. It kind of makes it look like an early PS1 game. As you see, it's running nice and smooth. There's no hitching or anything, even in the complicated parts. shortcut. And bam! Won the race. Okay, so that's Pod on this IBM PC 300 GL. Now for this last bit I'd like to talk about collectability. A lot of people in different forums that I frequent don't consider these Pentium machines to be collectible or even vintage, which I find kind of crazy, but I understand, since a lot of people collect the vintage systems of the 8-bit era, I have a PC Junior that I own and a couple Commodores, so I fully understand this, but I also consider these to be collectible because of the fact that they're becoming increasingly rare. I'm having a hard time finding these anymore, and it's just on the weirdest chances that I come across them. Although on eBay, they seem to sell pretty good. I've seen an IBM just like this sell for 80 bucks. So, they have a bit of commercial viability for selling. However, if you grew up in the 90s like I did, and you played a lot of these early games, you may want to go back and check them out again. And for that, you need one of these older systems. A modern Windows 7 machine isn't going to cut it. The modern hardware does not work. And uh, as such, if you have the original games, you are going to need the original computers. Especially for games like Omicron, which I have sitting here, because that game is notoriously impossible to get running. Mech Warriors would be another good example. Pod is a good example. There are a million games like that. As to collectability, yes, yeah, they are collectible. They have value, and they certainly have a place in a home, whether that be for Word applications or older applications you need to run for business software or for video games. These older computers still have a purpose. I'm Mad King Corduroy, and this is Transcendental Airwaves. I hope you enjoyed this video, and always keep your eyes open and save these things, because in the future, they're going to be almost impossible to find, just as the 8-bit era computers are today.